it's time to meet the man who makes this all possible. And that includes signing the paychecks, but not going as far to get T-shirts printed up or anything like that. Oh, no. Anyway, here he is, the star of the show, and, and my uncle, which is to say my father's brother. And that part's true. I, I, I should probably say that. It's very much so true. Here he is, the star of the show, Mr. Red Green. Hello. And uh, thank you all for uh, tuning in when... Uh, you know, there are so many worthwhile things you could be doing with your life. <laughs> you know, not everybody can say that. Harold, come on over here a minute. Uh, Harold is the announcer, producer, director, and uh, star's nephew of the show here. And also, I, I get to, like, control all the visual effects. Watch this. Huh? Huh? Uh, aren't kids something? I don't have any myself. I <laughs> was up to the uh, lodge yesterday. Uh, Buster Hatfield got all the guys to take off their socks and shoes and have a game of lawn darts. <laughs> and I, he loves contact sports. But you know, uh, we've been all kind of safety conscious uh, since we had that methane explosion when uh, Stinky Peterson dropped a cigarette down the two-holer. <laughs> yeah, that scared a bunch of us, especially Stinky. Luckily, he was sitting down. But you know, uh, Buster loves danger. I'd say danger is his middle name. It's, it's Ukrainian or something. Well, that's a great story, Uncle Red. But you know, let's move on to the next segment. <laughs> well, I'm not finished the story, Harold. Oh, no? Well, that's, that's an excellent point. But maybe just don't give it all to the viewers right now. Hold some back. You know, that's all I'm saying. Well, you're the producer. Yeah, and while they're waiting the conclusion of your story, we'll show them something that's not, like, so boring. <laughs> Stand back. You know, Harold, you're going to hurt yourself on that thing one day. Do you really think so? I'm going to make sure of it. <laughs> Once was a girl in my high school, the prettiest girl in class. She had the nicest auburn hair, but there's no way that this wine's gonna rhyme. <laughs> I wanted so bad to take her out, I thought my heart would burst. But once I saw her father's biceps, I was afraid he'd take me out first. This week uh, in the Handyman Corner, uh, we're going to talk about something uh, unpleasant but necessary. And I don't mean kissing your grandmother. <laughs> if you're like me and you own a full set of power tools, you probably think about death a lot. And you know them funeral parlors can just charge whatever they want. I mean, they call their customers stiffs. <laughs> the coffin alone is going to cost you two or three thousand dollars. Or what you can do is pick up a broken freezer cheap and make your own. <laughs> if you're the romantic type, uh, you and the missus could go together in one of them side-by-side -side refrigerator freezer units. <laughs> so once you got your freezer, then you just pick out the finish that you want on it. You can have oak or pine or mahogany or, in fact. Uh, anything that's available in the Mac Tac line. <laughs> and for about 20 bucks worth, it's gonna look just beautiful. <laughs> if you've never uh, Mac Tac before, this is an ideal uh, learner's project because uh, when people see it, they're gonna be looking at it through a veil of tears, uh, and then later, it's gonna be six feet under. <laughs> so, uh, open her up and uh, open her up. <laughs> Throw in a hunk of uh, fun fur for your lining. <laughs> and you're uh, ready to put on the uh, coffin handles. Just use a little bit of the handyman's secret weapon on that uh, duct tape. Uh, these are actually uh, towel racks, and they're cheap, but they look good. <laughs> and uh, when you think about it, there's kind of a subtle tie-in to the occasion, because you are throwing in the towel. <laughs> now, what about a headstone? Do you have to go the big dollar for the marble or the granite? Uh, I don't think so. What about something like this? <laughs> Remember this from a few weeks ago? This is a toilet tank. It was originally our uh, ceramic portable beverage cooler. But it makes a dandy little headstone. And uh, we just put these peel and stick letters on, a lot cheaper than engraving. And uh, these are actually designed uh, for a mailbox. But uh, when you think about it, this is your new address. <laughs> Anyway, you get the idea. You can do something like this. It's cheap, and it's just that easy. So until next time, remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> Harold, I got something for you here. <laughs>
Uh, we're going to take a break for some commercial messages right now, but when we come back, I'll finish the story about the hot water bottle. Or you could just do the story while we're at commercials. That, that would work, too. <laughs> it is spring. At night, the air is clear. You can hear the distant howl of wolves. The sound pierces the night, sends shivers up your spine, puts nerves on edge. The language is different, but we woodsmen know the message. The sad and lonely wail that says, I haven't had sex all winter. <laughs> so, uh, as I was saying, uh, Buster Hadfield really likes uh, dangerous games, you know? I mean, he's, he's not happy unless he's risking his life. Actually, with his clumsiness and all, uh, he's happy most of the time. <laughs> but uh, you know what he wanted us to do? He wanted all the guys to try to blow up one of them uh, hot water bottles until it exploded. Uh, he'd seen a wrestler do it on one of them educational programs. <laughs> so anyway, we gave her a try. We made Stinky Peterson go last, because nobody wanted to put their lips on it after Stinky had, you know. <laughs> uh, old Man Sedgwick went first, and God, he was blowing and blowing and blowing, and nothing was happening. And then. He turned to the side, and we could see that his lung was coming right out of his ear there. <laughs> Uncle Red, some viewers have a sensitive stomach. Yeah, that was Moose Thompson's problem. You're getting ahead of me there, Harold. <laughs> Uncle Red, why don't we just queue up the next segment? We can listen to some more stories about your friends inflating their organs at a later date. <laughs> queue up things. Three, two, one, go. I've lost control of my own show. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I was distracting you. Uh, sorry, Bob. You're right. Yeah. I won't count that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, um, Bob, I, uh, I have a question for you. You know, hmm? I, I know it's your day off. Right. And everything. Oh, day off? Oh, I wish. No, today's a work day like any other day, Red. Well, I, you know, I just saw you golfing here, and I just didn't realize the Department of Natural Resources uh, paid people to play golf. You know. <laughs> oh. Oh, this? No, no, no. I'm doing government work. I'm, uh, I'm measuring trees. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, uh, they've got me out measuring, uh, you know, birches, oh, maples, yeah. stuff like that. It's, uh, just to check their, uh, growth rate, you know, for, uh, future planting. Oh, yeah. Let's see, that was, uh, 35 centimeters. 35 centimeters. I did about a 40 on that last, uh, hole. <laughs> Makes, uh, a tree's five over par. That is power on the course here. Red maple. Oh. Oh. Well, uh, anyway, uh, Bob, we uh, we had a we had a little problem up at the lodge, and I want to talk, talk to you about it. Uh, if you got a minute, you know, I just like to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. What? Oh, yeah. No, you went. <laughs> what the hell was that? Bird. <clears throat> Yeah, well, I mean, there again, I think I was distracting you. I mean, I, I think that's, I, I would chalk that one up to... Yeah, I, would, I know, wouldn't count that, no, that shot either. No, absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> anyway, what, I wanted, what happened was uh, we had a truck, got into a truck and tractor pull kind of by accident up at the right. lodge. Like, mm -hmm. it, what happened was that uh, Stinky Peterson and Moose Thompson got their vehicles, the truck and the tractor, locked together because he backed up and they hitchcocked. And they started going like so, and then before you knew it, they cleared a lot of trees <laughs> out. <laughs> Four! <laughs> I missed it again! Yes. <laughs> Can you believe that? Three woofers in a row! Yeah. Three of I've never seen that. No. Have you seen that? Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That is really funny. <laughs> oh, wait till the guys at the lodge hear that. I'll yeah. they'll, they'll laugh. They will. Because that, that is a riot. They will yeah. laugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unless, of course, nobody tells them. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, well, I again here. I just I think I think I'm throwing you off. I would just not I would just not count that. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, I won't count that. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I thought you know since we've got uh, this whole underbrush gone behind a lodge, and you being with Natural Resources and you being a lodge member, you could get us some seedlings. <laughs> or... Four. Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I guess that tree there is the next one I'm going to measure. Yeah. <laughs> what about the seedlings? Uh, I mean, I could use ferns or. Oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Okay, great. 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 Appreciate it. I really appreciate it. <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> The sun goes down, that's when the boys all gather around. They come and ask me, as nice as you please, if I'll entertain them with my old trick knees. I snap them, I pop them, they crunch and they crack. I slip off the caps and slide them around the back. Oh, the boys, they just love it. I feel ten feet tall. You know, if it wasn't for my arthritis, we wouldn't have any fun at all. <laughs> Uncle Red, you better hurry up, get the old let out, because we got lots of mail to answer today. There sure is a whole bunch of them. We better just jump right in and answer them right away. You know, get right in at it. Maybe I'll just do that. I can read them first, and then you can answer them. That'll work. I'll just do that. Okay. Dear Red, <laughs> is it just me, or has the whole world gone screwy? It's both. Interesting. <laughs> Dear Red, as a feminist, I wonder if you feel that men will be able to overcome their baser instincts and their social pre-programming and treat women as equals, as human beings, and as whether the sexes can in fact cooperate and respect each other's differences while avoiding prejudging or pre pre prejudging or the other's talents and our abilities. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Dear Red, what kind of lure do you use for pickerel? All right, I use a spinner. Uh, maps number seven if I'm uh, trolling in daylight uh, with the sun, no cloud. If you have cloud, then I go with a number three or sometimes a number four because you can go deep with those and uh, they still pick up enough light to uh, give that natural shimmer that the picker will really go for. If it's night trolling that we're talking about, uh, I go with a number one uh, with the double hooks on it, which I had actually uh, custom made for myself by a jeweler uh, right here in town. Uh, last weekend in May, Maybe two years ago, I was uh, pickerel fishing on Lake Scugog, and I, uh, I hooked into a beauty. It was uh, about 14 pounds, uh, 21 inches of fish. And I got her in there with a, I think it was a 40-pound test line with a metal leader on it. Whoa. We certainly had a nerve there. <laughs> okay, final letter, Uncle Red. Dear Red, I like fishing, but I cannot abide hunting. My wife, on the other hand, sees no difference between them and says that both are a form of murder and that we as a civilization will have to leave them behind if we are to survive as a species ourselves. I think her neo-Buddhist theories are simply untenable and oversimplistic in the extreme. Do you agree? Yeah. <laughs> That's it? Yeah. Well, we, we have time if you want to expand on your answers, Uncle Ray. Well, all right. Uh, that day that I caught the pickerel, I'd been fishing deep all day. Two, three feet off the bottom. Great back and answer. Bill had uh, invited me to come out behind the lodge, and uh, we were going to fool around and do a little bit of archery. Uh, I think maybe, you know, he should have waited until I got there. But uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, all things being considered, I'm kind of glad that I didn't walk back there. Yeah, that's a nice treat. Thank you, Bill. And uh, he hit the rad. We got that there. Uh, I believe that was actually a new hole. I wasn't too happy. But he was fine. We got his arrow back. Anyway, uh, he sticks the target up. And uh, the idea is this is what we're going to try and hit the two of us. Uh, now, Bill's a bit of an expert on uh, bow and arrow. And I've, I've really never, never done anything with that. Um, he told me, you know, you put this thing on, it's called a quiver, which is something that you do when you're around Bill when he has a bow and arrow, believe me. 
and he showed me how to hold it and everything. And I think a lot of times it's easier to maybe to do something than to show somebody, you know. And then uh, you get the arrow out of there, and you know, kind of a Robin Hood. <laughs> now Bill was having a few problems. Uh, Bill, Bill. So I just, uh, Bill, Bill, you want to just, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're all set up there, and uh, oh no, uh, he, that was good of him to show me some of the things that can go wrong uh, when you're. Oh, look at that now. I'm like, and then they seem to have a mind of their own. Some of these arrows, I guess. Me just being a beginner, I didn't have these problems, so that, that wasn't a bad shot. Uh, and we were pretty darn, uh, pretty darn proud of ourselves. That's uh, that's not bad, you know. <clears throat> Bill took a bit here. Golly, golly, that stole. And that shirt, uh, that shirt will never, oh, look out. Oh, oh. That is so dangerous. Um, I don't know what you call that. And then this, oh, this is what happens to a lot of middle aged men, apparently. Some sort of, oh, that won't work, Bill. Now, just as we were, he's going to show me a practical application. There goes, a, and he can just he can show me how to hunt with one of these. And he's just following the flight of the bird, kind of. And the, now, this to me, this was a mistake. I don't care what Bill says. And he was more interested in the bird. I was watching that arrow because it went straight up. And then, of course, what it did then was come uh, pretty well straight down. <clears throat> oh boy! <laughs> yeah, we got it right of there. He was fine. Bill, you gotta be, now he wanted me to light this arrow and I, we just couldn't quite coordinate. Uh, I think that, was, that didn't strike, no, that was wrong. That was definitely wrong. So I thought I'd light it first. And we may have put this stuff on a little heavy, you know. We just, uh, of course this is retrospect again, you know. And then, well, well that's not, thank you, Bill. I don't, I think he went to get some water. You know? mm -hmm. uh, you missed it, Bill. Uh, so now we're starting to light the lodge uh, field on fire, and uh, Bill picks it up. Now his solution is the stick in the bucket, which I think had water in it, and then he just throws it into it. Well, that was great. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. It is summer. You hear the pure joy in their laughter outside your window. You watch them out on the lawn, running through your sprinkler. A half dozen middle-aged men naked. <laughs> It must be happy hour at the Legion. <laughs> Uncle Red, when, when you were in school, did you have gym class? I think so. Uh, those seven years are a little blurry. <laughs> Why? Well, I don't get the point of it. I mean, other than to give people an opportunity to flick naked flesh with a towel, an opportunity that does not come up in math or history class, who needs Jim? <laughs> oh, it's uh, part of your education, Harold. You know, it uh, prepares you for life. Oh, what is gym class really preparing you for? You show me one chief executive officer who got to the position he's in because he was good at dodgeball. Where would we be? Where would we be if Henry Ford decided to play field hockey and eventually went into coaching and finally into broadcasting? Where would we be? <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, I know what you're thinking, Uncle Red. There's a lot of good Russian gymnasts, but have you ever driven a ladder? <laughs> What's your point, Harold? Well, I was hoping maybe you wouldn't mind phoning my dad and getting the excuse from Jim for the rest of the year, especially before we have that dance class with the girls next week. <laughs> Think about it, you know. We'll be right back with uh, more of the same. Even more so. And good. <laughs> It's a great day for fishing, Hap. And that's why we are. Mind you, we got no way of telling if the fish are biting. No, unless we were in the submarine. <laughs> well, that's going to be a tough one, Hap. I don't think the launch ramp at the marina could take the weight. Oh, this is fresh water. When I was in the Navy, we stayed in saltwater oceans. <laughs> the deepest parts, chasms and the trenches. Well, I didn't know you were in the Navy, Hap. 
What year was that? Oh, that's classified. Military secrets. It was at the height of the Cold War. I joined the undersea service. Submarines, or as we used to call them, subs. <laughs> Six months without seeing sunlight, undersea in a nuclear sub, playing cat and mouse with the Ruskin. I didn't think there were any nuclear subs in the Canadian Navy, huh? <laughs> That's why I joined the American Navy. That's where the action was. Nuclear subs, long as three football fields. That'd be American football fields or Canadian? Uh, that's, that's classified. I used to work in the engine room. I was a stoker. Stoking that nuclear fuel. Oh, no, Ab, I, I think they just used the stokers on those uh, coal-powered ships. <laughs> Red, you can't. You can't burn coal underwater. The water would come down the chimney and put the fire up. Oh, this was nuclear fuel. Uranium 287. I'd fling open the door on that nuclear furnace and shovel in a heap of uranium, close the door. You mean to say, Happy just had piles of uranium lying around and you just would scoop that up? I didn't have to use a lot. Uh, one shovel full would power a sub for two months. <laughs> and I wore lead pants. I had 400-pound trousers. They had to weld the fly shot. Oh, what happened when you had to go to the bathroom? Uh, see, that's, that's top secret. Yeah, that yeah, we had to be cleared. I'll tell you, we had a few casualties. Well, you know, how they say that in war, the first casualty is the truth? Yeah. <laughs> Buster finally got his chance to blow up the hot water bottle, and God, you know, he, he did real well with it. Uh, he got it inflated to the point where it had filled up the den and it was actually spilling out into the lobby here. <laughs> and he had his arms and his legs wrapped around it there, and yeah, he was determined he was going to explode the thing, you know, but it never got that far because it unfortunately caught on uh, one of the antlers, which punctured a little hole in there, and yeah, the air came out so fast that the whole rig blew out the side door and skipped down the lake with uh, Buster hanging on for dear life. You know, it's not every day you get to see a man riding a 15-foot rubber bladder. No harm done, though, because, I mean, it petered out way before it got to the falls, and Buster just swam back. But now the whole area smells like Buster's breath. <laughs> anyway, uh, if my wife is watching, uh, I'm coming straight home tonight, and yes, I am bringing the TV guy. So, uh, thanks to all of you for tuning us in, and until next time, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at the Lodge, Keep your stick on the ice. <laughs>